Whenever you get your body settled into the ground, start off with a couple of breaths. Kind of to refresh our system, create a transition point for our day. Just feel how nice it is. You don't have to carry around so much. Huge inhales. Nice exhales. So as we continue these good deep breaths, let's take a moment to connect with our intention. The intention today has to do with the idea of release. There's a friend that I have that's going through a shamanic training. And so that's kind mm -hmm. of fun to get little tiny tidbits of what she's learning. And one of the things that they talk about is relating the different seasons to the cardinal directions. And so this autumn time is the west and each cardinal direction has different energy that goes with it. So the energy of the west is energy of release. It's the energy that circulates regarding um, letting go, regarding kind of giving up when we don't need to stick with an energy anymore. And it's also around death. And I find it mm. interesting because our society doesn't tend to like thinking about death that much. We tend to try to avoid it at all costs. But perhaps sometimes it's useful to consider it because when we avoid letting go, when we avoid releasing, we tend to accumulate too much to the point where it's almost like hoarding. There's just so much around us that there's no space for new growth to happen. And so today our class is about release. So especially when we get to the different stretches that we'll be taking, those are the moments to, to really tune into the energy of release and to consider in our life, what is it that I'm willing and wanting to release at this point? Knowing that I can't carry everything with me forever. That's like having a backpack stuffed full of boulders. It should. It just gets too heavy. So in the aspect of simplicity and releasing, that's our energy today. So with that idea to kick us off, let's begin. The knees start to come into the chest. Let's take some easy rocking movements. Just listening to low back, listening to hips. Good. So from here, let's begin to clasp hands around the left knee. The right leg stretches up to sky. Slowly let that circle all the way to hover right above the ground. And then invite it back in, hand switch to that side. So this is a slow bicycle to get us started. This warms up a lot of major muscle groups through core, quads, hamstrings glutes, but just feel how in this moment, perhaps we can release from the idea of having to be so rushed all the time. We can speed up later if we want to. But as a simple warming up, maybe it's not necessary to just be Speedy Gonzalez the whole time. So with a simple, simple <laughs> movement, you need to get it up. Take another five. Five. Four. Four, three, three, two, two, and last one each side. Circling the, the knee back in, we've got a hand on each knee again. 
Here, what we're gonna do is we hug this left knee in a little bit closer, right arm and right leg are gonna stretch away from one another. So it's almost like a good morning stretch, just huge extension through the side of the body. When that right knee comes back in, left side, arm and leg stretch away and come right back in. Inhale for when we're stretching. Exhale when we're returning. Take another three. Two. Last one each. Good. And then going back to bicycles, this time we can go a little bit faster. So it's less of a clasp, more of just support. One hand on the shin, one hand on the knee for the knee that's in. And then right leg circles out, pull the left knee in. This left leg circles out, pull the right knee in. The moment to kind of just keep on waking up those hip flexors. Here's five, four. Absolutely fine to be faster, slower than me. Three, two, one. Knees back in. Take a simple twist. Twist. He is going to left. Arms spread open, fill the space. Will your body have that quality of release? Another three good cycles. Really use that exhale to feel the release moment. Good, after all three, the knees come back up. Tilt over to the right. So the exhale is a natural cycle that happens in our bodies. And it's really, really helpful at helping us to remember how good release feels. The inhale, especially in a twist, inhale kind of inflates us, pulling us slightly out of the twist. And it's with the exhale that we just relax into the shape. Let's enjoy that quality of release. About three more breaths here. That third breath, the knees come back up. We'll straighten our legs up to sky. The big goal here in this next one is to not lower the legs low enough that the low back has to lift. So that was a lot of L's in one sentence, but we're only lowering legs to the point where low back is still able to be on the ground. That requires a lot of core engagement. So start to find that easy point it's gonna to need to be a point where we can comfortably maintain it for a while. So find whatever angle that is, doesn't have to be much. From here, lift the head up, arms are hovering by the hips. What we're gonna do is inhale for five. Exhale for five. Repeating. Five 
five more. Last one. Bend the knees softly, hands come behind the back of the head. Scoop the chin into the chest. We're stretching that heart back of the neck. If you'd like to drop feet to floor, that's also fine. And sometimes it's nice just to let the neck have some looseness left and right. Get some of those tight spots out. Dropping head back to floor. Allow this right leg to go straight up to sky. Left leg finds an angle, perhaps hovering right above ground. And with our next exhale, we're lifting the left leg up, dropping right leg down, and switch. If it feels like a little bit too much for the core. You don't have to lower foot so far. It's perfectly fine to just floor to a nice 45 degree angle and switch. Totally fine if you're faster or slower than me. I'll do a countdown of 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Whatever hands your legs are on, switch it to the right. We're gonna lower left leg to floor. This right leg gets pulled in nice and tight. It may be the experience of the hamstrings right now is really for that clenched side. So just breathe, the shape doesn't matter too much. It's just the feeling of elongation going on. Anchor your grip on that right leg wherever you can reach. And then allow this right leg to start opening up to the right. It's not a goal to try to touch the foot open to the ground. It's a goal to feel the inner thigh stretching. So usually to get there, I actually have to pull the toes much more to the back wall side, kind of toward the head of my mat, rather than focus on how much it opens up to the ground. Good, right leg lifts up. Left hand holds onto the outside of that leg. This one's not a twist, we've already done one of those. This one's more about just gradually releasing this leg to the left side until we feel the stretch in the outer <laughs> hip, outer thigh really nice. Now as leg lifts back up, before we switch sides, point the right toes, try to take all the bend out of that knee. And then we're just, just gonna do three large circles, kind of as large as this hip can handle um, to each direction. So choose your first direction, taking three, and up. two, one, switch. Three, two, one. Good, slowly lower right leg to the ground. 
feel that moment when the heel finally comes in contact with the earth. There's a release to the right side. That's that release we're trying to feel the sensation of in our body. So now left leg up to sky. Let's grab on, feel that leg getting pulled in until the hamstrings happy. Her left hand, the leg opens up to the left. Leg lifts back up to the sky. We allow the leg to cross over, only let it fall to the point you need to get to fill outer hip, outer thigh. Leg lifts back up, release the arms. This leg tries to do its three large circles each direction. So take the first and three, two, one, and second direction, three, two, one, Good, slowly lower the leg down, feeling that moment when the heel makes contact with the earth and there's release. Just feel another breath pass in, and out. Good, knees come into the chest. Roll the forehead in. This five times arms and legs stretch away from one another and curl back in. Another four. Three. Two. One. Good work. Head drops down. Legs go up to sky. Perhaps thumbs start to tuck slightly under the hips. And so from here, we're gonna choose the size of like a very large um, beach ball. And what we're gonna do is trace our toes around that beach ball clockwise. And you're back up at the top, reverse, counterclockwise. We're just gonna take some of these, almost like a corkscrew to each direction. If you would like to increase the diameter, that makes it harder. So you do not have to. Even a tiny little circle is work. Pretty good work too. Let's take another five. Five. Four. Four. Three, three, two, two, last one, and one. Spread the arms out left and right, bend the knees. Knees are gonna fall to the left like the first twist that we took. But once we've relaxed over that side, what we're gonna do is slowly lift the top knee up like a clamshell and then squeeze that top knee back down. It's like we're creating resistance, like moving through molasses. Let's repeat another five, 
and squeeze. Four. Three. Two. One. Just pause for a bonus breath to enjoy the twist. Engage the core. And feel the knees slowly lift up. Jump them all over to second side. From here, top knee lifts up through molasses and squeeze us down. Let's repeat another um, five. Four. Three, two, one. Good. Take the knees, or I guess just relax here one more breath. Especially feel the exhale. And then engage the core to lift. Set the feet on the earth. Let's take five bridge poses. Slide the hands in. Just rolling up, five. Exhale, feel that release, rolling back down. Feel all those back muscles. Four. Three. Two, one, and slide the legs out long, arms reach up overhead, we're taking an inhale, we're going to try to do a full roll up to sit, so exhale, try to roll up, if you need to grab thighs, that's fine, take the roll over, and as slowly as you can, again, grabbing thighs if you need to, try Pull back down. Good. Four more if we're doing okay. Four. If you need a little momentum to you, that's fine. Eventually our goal is to not need it, but use it while we still do. Good. Here's three. Two. Good, last one. Relax, just a couple of bonus breaths here. Knees can be slightly bent or nice and straight, your choice. So rising up, the knees open out wide so that we can wrap our hand under the shin to grab a kind of the ankle heel area. Do that little wrap each side. The goal of this one, it looks like this. I'm trying to balance kind of like a white knee boat pose. Balance enough that I can clap my feet three times like a seal. And then when I go onto my back, I try to pause so I can clap three times there. Rocking up, try to find that balance point, clap three times. And find the balance point three times. That takes a lot more core effort to try to find the balance point. So it's okay if it takes some rocking to get there. Let's keep on repeating a few more reps. So two more cycles if you do it, okay.
last time Rob came back. And whenever you rock up, set it into cobbler. The feet can be close, the feet can be far. It's all your choice. Spine gets a beautiful chance to just remove So rising up, it's just going to be an easy cross leg. Just set the right leg in front. I'm going to do a little bit with our arms. So arms are up to each side. Similar to before, we take a huge circle to one direction and then a huge circle to the other. So think of that beach ball again. Ready? Take it first. And reverse. Reverse. Just keep on switching. Breathing. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Good. Set the right hand down at your right side. Left hand reaches up. To lean over. Huge stretch through the side body. that left hand to the right knee, torso rises back up, and then right hand slides behind us, and next going with this. Good, wind from the twist, hands come behind us, try to lift the hips and the heart up. Setting them down, slide the hands forward and through. Good. So coming back up, switch legs, left is in front. This time as arms come out, take a thumbs up. Pumping up and down to small little pumps. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thumbs down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thumbs forward. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thumbs back. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, left hand down, right hand up and over. Drop the right hand to the left knee, torso's up. Taking the spinal twist this direction. So forward, plant the heads behind, try to lift hips and heart. And releasing down, slide the arms forward and through. Let's go ahead and set our knees underneath our body. Take three sets of cat paw, just helping to engage all those muscles in the back together. So 
Going back to neutral. Right leg kicks back. When you take the right knee to the nose, hold for a moment. Keep it squeezing in. And straighten that right leg back behind. Keep the leg straight. Five times we touch the toes to the ground and lift the heel up. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Repeat again. Knee to nose. Fold. Straight leg back. And touch down five, four, three, two, one. This time, when you're up, bend the knee. Try to see how your balance is either lifting left hand out to the side or trying to grab left hand to those toes behind your back. Good. One more inhale, a nice exhale, release that hand and knee to the ground. Left leg kicks straight back. Bring the knee to the nose, hold. And kick back. Stay with the straight leg, toes touch down. Lift up, five, four, three, Two, one, one more rep, each nose hold. Kick straight back. Five, four, three, two, one, bend the knee. Maybe right hand floats to the right or maybe right hand grabs the toes behind your back. Feel the core constantly correcting itself with the balance. Beautiful. Release. Drop the knee down. Spread the fingers. Tuck the toes. Um, if you want to watch for this first rep, that's perfectly fine. What we're going to be doing from a down dog shape is taking the feet close and then swiveling the knee to one side, squatting down, and then straightening back up through the center. So squatting glutes to heels and back up. So if you're ready, come up to the shape and swivel to the first side, 10, and 10, nine, nine, eight, Eight, take it slower if it's hard. Seven, seven, six. You don't have to squat quite as low either. Six, five, five, four, four, three, three, two. You guys are amazing. Last one each. Set the knees down. Good. Slide the hands forward, kneeling plank. And a slowly lower to a point where you can still press back up. So we're just going to go for five. So slowly lower to the point of control and we press back up. Keep breathing. Four. Press. Three. Two, one. Good. Tuck the toes, downward facing dog. From down dog, we're going to try to take right ankle to left thigh, like a figure four stretch. And then walk your hands backwards until you're toward the back of the mat. You've got your left foot underneath you. The knee is bent to create a shelf. Trying to balance as that hip gets a chance to open. So you're almost there. Just take right ankle onto the left thigh if you can. 
If it's too high, you can cross it the shim. I think we're advanced. That's pretty advanced. That's okay. <laughs> That's, that works. Yep, yep, yep. To the best that you can, whether it's toes on the ground or not, try to see if you can rise up with balance. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good work, good work. <laughs> toes close to one another. Slow lift of the heels up. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Good. Big toes close. We're gonna try to lower to a toe squat. If it's a little bit too much for knees, you can drop the knees down if needed. But the full toe squat would be hands at the heart. Start to lift the heels up, dropping glutes to heels. Try to squeeze the thighs together to find the balance if you can. Heels can lift, yep. Good. If you ever need to drop hands or knees down, that's okay. Good, let's drop fingers to floor, taking a little twist, hands walk over to left. Over to right. As you go back forward, a moment with the Achilles tendon stretch, heels rock back, roll the spine forward. Good, and then walk the hands back up to downward facing dog. We're gonna try the second side again if the cross is at the shin and toes are on the ground, that's okay. Good. So, try to take left ankle to right thigh. Again, just find whatever cross will happen. Start to walk the hands backwards until we're Balancing on that right side. This one's just a nice little stretch for hip area is really what this one's going for. Plus a little balance challenge. Good. See if you can rise up with balance, whatever the, the leg positions are. Good. And then release, feet to floor. Give the hands and the feet little shakes. It's a chance to kind of just release some tension. <sighs> Good work. So this time, let's step the feet about as wide as the mat. Lower to a nice little squat. hands down, kind of move to a toe squat on that left side. So lift the heel up, you're balancing on that side. Right leg slides out, so we're stretching in our thigh. Good, slide the left one in. Rock onto that side. And we're switching directions. Slide this one in. Now allow the legs to straighten out. Your toes are turning forward. Just give the spine a nice chance to release for a little while. So the weight of the spine hanging heavy. Open the hamstrings to stretch. Like that idea, how much can I surrender to gravity here? More breaths, so that exhale helping us release. That second breath, start to plant the hands, walking back forward like a down dog, the feet come in.
We're going to knees. Taking our last little push-up challenge of the day. Again, you're welcome to stay in that feeling place or lift knees if you're ready for that. Super slow motion again. Enough lowering enough that you have better control the lift. So here's five. And press. Four. Three. Two. One. Good. And from here, allow left knee to slide forward and through into pigeon pose. Slide the other leg back. Feel free to lower down to elbows. As so we're heading to these last couple of poses, you're finished with all the strength stuff. So now just good stretching for all these things that work so hard. So as we're here, it's an amazing opportunity to return back to that idea of release. Imagine mentally trying to discover something that you're working on releasing or that you now have discovered that you would like to release. This could be anything. It could be just decluttering a room of your house. You've decided from this moment, that's going to be one of my next priorities. Or maybe there's something in your life that's sucking a lot of your time, a lot of your energy, and maybe even your happiness. Maybe that's something that we can release, whether permanently or temporarily. Or maybe it's something like a habit that you can release. Even a thought or a word that's been part of your vocabulary that hasn't really been serving you. Maybe that's what you'd like to release from your vo vocabulary. Two more breaths, especially focusing on how good that exhale feels. So as we rock our weight onto this hip, what I want us to do is turn open to face the center of the room, whichever direction turns us inward. So a nice wide angle shape. So when you get to this place, put the right hand in front of the right leg. Left shoulder peels back to step, reaches up and over. And rising up, left hand goes down, right hand up and over. Good. Finding left floor, slide forward and through. As we rise up, turn to your leg that has not done pigeon. Let that knee swivel. The other one behind. It's okay if you're facing back up mat, forward up mat. Doesn't matter too much. But feel yourself starting to release down. Good. Make sure again the sacrum's level. We're not purposely rocking onto that hip. And as we're here. Notice the wisdom of this half of the body and how maybe that's very different than the first half. Maybe this side agrees with the idea that we were thinking of releasing on the other side. Or maybe this side has something new to add to the story. We're shifting the intention a little bit.
as we relax into these exhales. Continue to listen, getting both sides to agree on what would be a really good focus of release for the next segment of our life. Not that it's bad to have possessions or attachments, people that we love, but recognizing that if we hold on to too much, it's like putting a bunch of boulders in our backpack, it becomes too heavy to carry it. And so in releasing, there's a type of freedom that allows for space for new, brilliant things to flow into our life. Two more breaths, just relaxing right here. Good. And after that second one, swivel back open to the wide angle. The knees can be bent if that's what's needed to sit up tall. But either way, let's take a twist over our right shoulder. Twist over our left shoulder. forward, hands plant behind us, allow heart, maybe even throat to lift up. And easing the spine and neck up, let's slide our hands forward and through one more time. So lifting up, slide both legs to face top of mat. When feet planted, make sure there's enough space to roll onto your back. Perhaps engaging core to try to roll slowly down. And it might feel nice to do one last twist. So you could do other movements if something else feels better instead. But one option would be to cross right thigh over left. Just start to let both knees fall over to left. Easy hip openers, spinal release. Rising back up. Drop this foot down, left crosses over, tilt to the right. Lifting back up, if there's still movements your body needs, take them. Otherwise, at any point, you can release down to a beautiful shavasana shape. Like I mentioned, no rush to get into shavasana. That's never the case. But when you feel so comfortable, so ready to just release, the idea that we can think about today is especially just letting that exhale go. A good, comfortable exhale, helping us release our um, our cares and our worries. Relax here for several minutes. Just.
Let's begin to deepen the inhales. Exhales. Introducing movement back to the body. Good stretching movements that just feel awesome. Perhaps taking a fetal position to one side if you like it. Feeling no sense of rush. Sometimes I'll literally sit here and count out four or five good relaxing breaths before I'm ready to rise up. Eventually making our way up comfortably. And with hands at our heart, we think of that idea that we've decided to release from our life. And we imagine almost like taking that part of us out, just setting it on our mat to never have to deal with that energy again. And feel how light and free it feels to not have to carry everything around with us all the time. And so with that release, that energy of the West to lead us on, to allow ourselves to wrap up the time we shared together with the sound of home. Deep inhale now. May we be filled with light and happiness and peace. Namaste. Namaste.